everybody welcome back to Missy's Imaginings I'm Missy and as you can see uh, my David Tennant has been put back together um, I just haven't got his hair done today uh, so I thought that's something we could do here um, on the video so I used the fur that I talked about in the last video and cut out the pieces and I thought it'd be fun to just you know let you see how I put a wig together I can also, if you're interested, uh, put the pattern pieces on the website. I have just simple, simple shapes. There's a, there we go, so you can see, I don't know how washed out that might be. There's a, not quite a half circle, it's actually a half circle and then a little bit extended. So that would be the sides of the head. Then there's two shapes that look more like a fan, and one's the front and one's the back. Uh, they're a little deceiving. The wide part is the bangs, and it comes up to the crown. So these two pieces are sewn together to make an hourglass shape, and then the half circle kind of shape is sewn right in here on both sides. So you need two of these and one of each of these. And on the pattern, I will put the little arrows indicating which way the fur should lay so that you have actual hair growing like it looks like it's natural. If you have it the wrong way, then the fur <laughs> is going to all go away, which is nice, but it's hard to make a hairline without looking fake. So if you have the fur moving forward, then you can always trim it or whatever, but it looks a little bit more natural. So we're going to put them together. Um, for those of you who have, have not used fur, uh, when you go to buy it, they'll put a little snip in the fabric and then they just yank, you know, they tear it. And you can't really do that around a pattern piece to preserve the fur. So what you need to do is when you're cutting, you want to take the blade and go up inside the fur so that you're not actually like cutting across the fur because that would cut all your length off. So you want to take the scissors and feel so that you're going underneath the hair. There we go. And you kind of feel it so that you're going right along the fabric but underneath the fur. Let's see if I can get this trimmed out here. I'm going a little bit fast. But then when you pull away, you'll still see fur hanging there. It's harder on short furs just because they're shorter and there's the nap lays closer and so you really have to kind of work at it. But as you can see on these pieces, the edge of the piece is where my thumb is and then there's still fur hanging down. So that's what you want to end up with. You want the fur from this side of, you know, the fur side to extend beyond the cut line. It just helps it when your finished product is is done. So I will go ahead and put these together. I'll jostle the camera so you can see that and uh, we'll get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to put the two fan pieces together. They're just going to be edge to edge. I'm going to use a little bit less than a quarter inch seam allowance. So the edge of my sewing machine there we go, the edge of the sewing machine foot is right at a quarter inch from the needle. So I'm going to tuck this under so it's not quite to the edge. So it'll be a little bit less. It'll actually be right about the edge. A little more than an eighth, but a less than a fourth. And this wants to layer funny. So you want your fur layers together. And then I always back tack when I start and stop. But because this is so short, I'm simply going to go all the way across and back tack all the way back and come forward a little bit more. So that'll put that edge together. If you want, you can overlock these to finish your edge. But I'm just going to try to see how it goes here. So then this is what it ends up with. And then once you get it sewn, you can ruffle it up a little bit. So. Then when I do the next part, I'm going to try to open that seam a little bit. And again, I'm going to sew fur to fur. 
So I'm going to start at one edge like this and just sew all the way around the edges here. And when I go into my machine, I like to sew with the edge of my fabric facing the inside of my machine. I've seen some people sew this way. For me, that's a little bit backwards. So I'm going to try to get the fur kind of pushed away from my seam just so that I can keep as much as possible as actual hair and not sewn into the seam allowance because I want to keep it. So today, my daughter works down at a local pizza place and I told her I'd give her a ride to work. But there's a celebration going on in our town that oh my word there's lots and lots of people okay now I'm just kind of working this long edge around as I fit around the curved edge and now I'm at that seam so I'm going to lift my foot keeping the needle sunk open that seam and lay it flat put that back down and one way that you can think of in sewing curves especially when the curves go opposite directions, is uh, an old trick that when I learned to use my serger, they told me, you want to fool the machine into thinking you're sewing a straight line and not going around a curve at all. So you bring both of your edges together, one's curving this way and one's curving this way, bring them together so that when it comes to the needle, it's actually just sewing a straight line and that's a good way to think of going around curves um, it'll be a lot easier to sew that way than if you were trying to bend all the time and match them and then go around a corner I don't know if my hands are helping very much but then let's see here against the machine light let's see if we can get a good picture I'll trim out my threads here so now our seam goes all the way around there. We've got a little less than a quarter of an inch. So now I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm going to match my edges together here. And go ahead and line that up. And on this section, since I've already... Oh, the scary thing. Right, I was going to tell you about that. So we were... I dropped her off at work, and the event is going on in our town. And so there's people everywhere, cars everywhere, and it's a little town, so it's not that huge of a deal. But it is kind of a pain because you have to wait and wait, and you really can't get anywhere. So I thought, well, I'll go up on the highway and come around from the back side of town. And I, I'm driving along, and I had to go all the way out of town to where there's a little restaurant, and then get in the turn lane turn left from a turn lane so I could turn onto a side road, turn around and come back because of the ne never ending flow of traffic headed towards the coast. And uh, I had to hurry and get home before the parade starts or I wouldn't be able to get home. And uh, as I'm waiting to turn back onto the highway from the other side of the road where the little restaurant was, uh, some person in a car pulled right out in front of 60 mile an hour traffic. Holy cow! Horns were blazing and people were going all over the road and tires were squealing and I thought, oh goodness, I need to get home and so and calm my nerves. <laughs> so that was an adventure and a half. So I'm glad to be home and, and able to actually make this video because it was a little scary out there. So now we can see that that edge is sewn and this edge is sewn. So all that's left is to turn it inside out and then you can rumple up the fur. When I'm making a wig like this, now the next step I will do is hand sewing. And I'm going to take the edge and just turn it up about a quarter of an inch. And that's what I was saying, how that'll give you a more finished look that looks like real hair because it'll hang free off of that hemmed edge. And so Let's see if that would show with the light behind it. Um, so it would just give a more natural look. And then when that, I'm turning that up, I'll stitch that up. 
by hand because here again since I'm sewing the part that will be on this side you'd be able to see when I sew with a needle just like when I only use my scissors to cut the fabric when I hand sew this I'm going to tack this edge but I want my needle to only be catching the fabric so I'm going to be very careful when I take my needle into this thread and not go all the way through excuse me and come all the way out and all the way back in I'm just going to tuck my needle in just enough that it's catching that fabric but not catching the hair on the other side so when you're working with a wig you just want to be careful of that so I'll, I'll tack it just enough to get the fabric and then grab that edge once that's done I'll take elastic measure it around his head and take about an inch off because you want it to be stretchy and then I, when I sew the elastic in I'll tuck it in the front and the back and stretch it out then pin and tuck the sides and that way then they'll all be placed in those four spots so that my elastic is evenly placed and then as I go around and tack it I'll be stretching that open so that I'm stretching my elastic once it's all tucked in there and the elastic goes back down to its shrunken size it'll give that fit to the wig I also because it's for David Tennant of course I also cut a couple little pieces that I'll probably be sewing on in place to give him some sideburns because Doctor Who has and my daughters inform me he's not supposed to be Doctor Who so my daughters inform me yeah he's not supposed to be called Doctor Who he's just the doctor so my mistake so anyway that's uh, what I'm doing for his wig oh, dropped a sideburn that could be dangerous so we'll take this black one off now this one's not fitted yet it doesn't have the elastic and I'll still need to grab his hair but so now it looks like he has a good hat we'll see how it'll fit we'll turn that up and see how he's gonna look be looking for some short hair so yeah I think I'll be able to make it work we'll test it out and see I don't know we'll check it out I might have to press some of those seams out a little bit more he doesn't want to sit up but he looks better with brown hair that's for sure and we'll make it stand up so I don't know we'll see if I can get that elastic in there and get it tucked around his head um, the other news it kind of is a little floppy I think the elastic that he came with might be a little old there's not a lot of snap to it so we'll see but we'll give him oh here we'll put some hair back on him keep him warm there for a little bit all right you'll just have to be back in the rocker days for a little bit the other news, um, of course, Jack, I put some clothes on him. It's not really his outfit, but I had it ready, so I thought, well, you know, he's tired of standing there in a makeshift loincloth, so we'll actually give him a kimono set to wear, and the crown looks pretty good on him, so I'm not sure if you could see the colors before, and I'll put a something white behind it, but it's a real pretty blue and white um, stones, and then of course the gold and this is gold so it's not really going to match what I did there you go but I found something at Joanne eh. here we go that turned out pretty cool and it was some guy they called it some kind of a kit but it's basically a, a top and bottom piece and this isn't really glass it's probably some clear kind of tubing it feels like a rubber tubing of some sort so I can I got some beads well I had some that kind of matched and I, I bought the little kit and I brought it home and I filled it with some little gems white and blue that will match the crown even though these silver colors don't match and then just strung it up with some steel colored beads but I thought that turned out really cool I'm not sure if my hand is helping that or not there we go that might be a better view of what it looks like but I just filled it up with some little Schwartz crystals um, so it's kind of looks like those precious elven gems that they seem to like in all the the books and movies so I thought that was a really cool little 
pendant though. And uh, so I got that and made that up for Jack. And it turned out pretty good. I was pleased with how that turned out. So I thought he could be the keeper of the gems there for a while. So anyway, that's about it for today. Um, not a lot. I guess I could do one tiny sneak preview. Seems like I'm always going to be done and then I think of something. So for those who haven't seen them actually in comparison to what size they'll be, I do have one of the jackets completely finished that will go with the little dresses. So I have one, I'll snap it up here, and just so you'll have a size comparison on what they're going to look like. So this is the female jacket, the blue one, of course. So Jack and, and David here are about 65 centimeter, I think, and so this is for the SD size girl. So that's what the jacket looks like. The collar can be worn up, or we can bend it down if you just like that so there we go so it can be worn down so that little jacket that's what they look like and then the back is pieced so there's four pieces to the back the yoke the center and then the the two side pieces and this is all pieced if you open it up and then the front is pieced as well so there's all the seam lines in here the great thing about sewing with vinyl it doesn't yeah, and this is really soft, so that's nice stuff. So anyway, there's a sneak peek at the jackets, and um, I think that'll be about it for now. So uh, I will post the little wig pattern on the website, as I've mentioned before, for anybody who's coming brand new to the videos uh, on my website, you'll be able, and I'll put the title up there like I did before. Um, there's a free stuff tab that you can go and look and there'll be photos of all all the things I have for free and so you just look through and all the patterns will be shown as a collection so when you see something you think oh yeah I'd like to try that then you just click on the tab the ready to print page tab and that will give you a list of all the PDF files so you can just click on one download it or just click on it and print. You don't even have to save it, but if you'd like to, you may. So anyway, I will post this pattern on there as well if you want to try your hand at a wig and uh, have fun. Yeah, experiment. If there's something you think that would fit your doll better and you want to adjust it, adjust away and have fun. So thanks for coming by and I'll see you next time.